up everybody? So we're out in the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday and in this episode we're going to do something a little bit different than what I planned on. Uh, a lot of bit different than what I planned on. So we were originally going to be making a leather sheath for this particular knife right here. This is our first hidden tank knife that we made on the channel. We we're going to do that but I realized that there were tools that I did not have that I still needed in order to complete it. So we've already cut everything out but in order to complete this, I've got to wait for a couple of things to get here, which are going to get here tomorrow. My goal is to still release this particular build this week, so you'll be able to have the episode of me completing the first leather sheath on the channel this week. So don't be too sad or anything like that that we're not watching that today. We are going to be working on a new Shop Talk Tuesday build series, though. I wasn't planning on starting this build series till next week. But I decided, well, I still got to see something, so we might as well have some fun and start making a new knife while I'm working on this. Now, me talking about the thing that I'm about to talk about is going to make you go, well, then why did you do that? But I am going to give you a little bit of backstory on the profile that we are going to be using for this particular build series. And it's not so much a TED talk, but there will be a little bit of a takeaway for making sure you don't stress yourself out, but I am going to talk for a couple of minutes so that y'all can understand how we came up with this design and why I even came up with it. Now, <laughs> I got to a point this weekend to where I was super stressed out about all the different projects we have going on and the YouTube videos and, you know, work, life, YouTube, all that stuff just came together and had me super stressed out. So I decided to take a second, pause, put everything on hold, and just sit down and draw. So what I ended up doing was grabbing the first thing that I had near me, which was a Amazon box, and I drew a knife on it, this guy right here, and was like, huh, I really like that profile. I think I'm going to use that for the next Shop Talk Tuesday build series knife. So that I then took a picture of it, put it on the TRE Workshop Facebook page and was like, hey, do y'all think that I should make this as the next build series knife? And they were like, yes, yes you should. So that's what we're gonna start today. But the whole point behind that was I let all of my stuff stress me out to the point to where my thing that was supposed to relieve my stress, which is being out here in the shop, making cool knives, was also stressful. You know, it's understandable that my regular job be stressful, Jobs are stressful. It is what it is. Family life, we got my kids going through the whole stomach bug thing. That's stressful in itself. You never want your kids to be sick, and when they are sick, it's a mess, literally. But when it comes to coming out here into the shop, this whole thing was supposed to be a stress relief for me, but with me having the five shop sponsor bills that I'm working on, plus the completing the two insanity builds, the challenge knife that I'm working on in the background, a customer's knife, I had all this stuff coming together. I was so stressed out about the fact that I needed to release a video this last weekend, and as you see, I did not release one. Um, but I was so stressed out about that and not having the tools that I need for this particular leather sheath and all that stuff that I was just like, what am I doing? I need to pause, calm down. So I did. I stopped drew this knife. Drawing is very relaxing for me because I can just think while I'm doing it and it's just relaxing. And I did that and then I took my little dry erase board that I have right here and I did a to-do list for things that I can easily knock out. So I can start knocking out a few things and again just start relieving stress. And that's what we did. So that's how this particular profile right here came to an existence. That guy right there was a stress relief profile. <laughs> so we're going to be taking this piece of steel right here, which is a piece of leaf spring. It's 5160. If you're ever wondering what steel you have when it comes to leaf springs, all you need to know is the year and make of the actual thing that you're utilizing the leaf spring off of. And you can do an easy Google search and it'll tell you what they were making their leaf springs out of for that particular year on those particular vehicles. So I know for a fact that this is 5160, so I'm confident when using it. Now, something that I've got to focus on a little bit on this is 
we got to flatten this out because it does have that leaf spring curve to it and it does come to a taper at the end and I am going to utilize that taper a little bit on the tang side of this so we do got to make sure we get everything nice and straight it's not one of those things that I can easily just take and flatten out and call it good because I do got to make sure that the center of this taper is centered with where the tip's going to be because you can easily flatten this and almost make a chisel out of it by flattening one side and not really focus on pulling that taper back down towards the center. If you do that, you'll have created your own warp in your blade and you'll be trying to grind it out. So we're going to utilize the taper. It's a few things that I just got to think through while we're doing it. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to get out to the forge, get it heated up, get this put in there, start forging. Now you might be thinking, Eric, don't you got to clean all that corrosion and rust off? Nope. Whenever I put it in the forge and start getting it up to forge temps and everything like that, that stuff's going to start coming off. Plus, whenever I hammer on it a few times, all that stuff's going to flake off and it's going to clean itself. So I don't have to do anything other than put it in the forge and start hammering on it. Now, we're not going to be forging this to profile. All I wanted to show y'all was how we're going to forge a leaf spring flat and then come in here, cut everything out, and do something that is repeatable by y'all at home if y'all wanted to try and do this. Not everybody is going to be able to forge a 5160 leaf spring to that profile. 5160 is a beast of something to forge. It does not like to hammer well. And if you don't have good size hammers, it's going to take you forever. And it's going to blow your elbow out. So just, if you're going to do something like this, it's a lot easier to do it by stock removal. Unless you sit there and want to hammer for a long time. I've done it plenty of times. We're not going to do it on this one. <laughs> so let's get out there, let's get this thing forged flat, start cutting it, let's see what a profile looks like. So I just want to show y'all something because this is how much the lighting in my shop messes with the what y'all see on camera, like how hot the still is. So I take this out, put it on here, shut the door. This still has the light on. That's how hot this actually is. times whenever y'all are looking at this and y'all are thinking wow he's just sitting there hammering on cold steel and I'm not it's still way hot just whenever you take and you introduce the light it instantly looks way colder than it is so lights can play with y'all whenever y'all looking at it on camera that's not actually true temp from what y'all see that's why typically whenever I quench, I quench with the door shut and in low light as possible so y'all can actually see how hot the steel is. But that's a big difference than that, wouldn't you say? We're almost there, straightening wise. We just got a couple more things to work on.
So after a whole bunch of <laughs> measuring and marking, trying to figure out exactly where I want the pins, I finally got locations for them. Now of course this is going to be a lanyard hole right here, but trying to figure out what looked good between the center of this here and here, because we're going to have different pin sizes. Because this is so much larger, the center, from the center to the edge of the hole, versus the center to the edge of the hole of this it put it to where the hole was wanting to be further back this way and then it would have looked off from this distance so I had to figure out exactly what I wanted to do so I had to mark two different lines go from the center of that and then figure out what center I wanted it to be so that's what we have marked on here now now we're just going to punch them So now we have our centers punched for where our pins are going to go and go ahead and drill those out. Now we're going to be using a 3 16 drill bit because we're going to be using 3 16 pins. I will tell you this, I do, I'm doing all this before the bevels and everything because I want all of this flat area up here to be able to clamp things down because we do have a tapered tang so there is a gap back here now one of the things that you can do is you can take and put a spacer behind here and that way whenever you're drilling through it drills through straight now one of the things to note is I am going to oversize the holes a little bit it makes it a lot easier for you to put your scales on here and the pins to slide through easily there's no need for these to be super tight around your pins. You just want to make sure the holes are tight for your scales. Epoxy will fill up any little gap that you have here. So we're going to go ahead and drill this through.
went ahead and drilled the hole for the sharpening choil. So what we're going to end up doing is just connecting this line, the outer line there, and this outer line here. That's going to give you that little R-shaped sharpening choil. So that's all we got to do now. And then we'll be able to pretty much done with this phase of this build. Alright guys, let's go ahead and wrap this one up right here. So, this is how it's looking so far. I think that that is turning out absolutely awesome. It feels so good in the hand, it just fits perfectly in there. This is going to be a beast of a knife, I mean the thickness on here is just over a quarter of an inch thick on the spine. So that is going to be one hefty, crazy knife, but it's going to be awesome at the same time. Now. What we did in this episode, of course, we forged it all flat, took that curve out of the leaf spring, made sure we centered our tang that we had that was already tapered. We went ahead and pulled it center so that it goes straight down and everything's nice and even. And then we went ahead, cut everything out with the angle grinder, refined that profile on the 2x72. I did do a step off camera where I went on the oscillating spindle sander and just kind of smoothed everything out inside here on the spine and all that. And then we came back, we did the holes for the pins and the handle for the tang. And then we did our sharpening choil, which has that R shape in there. Now, the thing that we need to do next in the next week's Shop Talk Tuesday is grind in the bevels so that it really starts looking like a knife. And then we need to grind in our folders to save weight through the handle here. So we're going to grab fullers, we're going to grab bevels, it's going to be really cool. I think this is going to be an awesome knife and I'm really interested to know what y'all think about this profile. You know, the cool thing is, even though I was super stressed out, I was able to take a step back and draw out this profile on an Amazon box <laughs> and that's what made this become a reality. Something as simple as that, you know? and. There's those times that happen. I want to know, have y'all ever been at that point where y'all just been so stressed out that y'all have to do something else or take a step back, refocus, and then come back at what you're doing? I know that probably happens a lot to a lot of the people that are out there. You know, it's just something that happens. But it is nice to be able to take that step back and every once in a while you come up with something like this in that process. But, guys, for the rest of this week, we do still have the leather sheath that we're going to be working on. We've got the five shop sponsor knives that we're going to be doing. I'm going to be releasing those videos both this week, so be on the lookout for those. Guys, that is it for this one. If y'all would, give this video a thumbs up, share this video, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't yet, I would really you know, appreciate that. We're almost at 25,000 subscribers, which is an awesome benchmark. But guys, y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all next time.